r slash out of the loop. Comto3 says. What's going on with critics referring to the new Zelda game as a $70 DLC? To be honest I haven't played a Zelda game since Wind Waker but all the hype around it lately has made me want to get back into it starting with the Breath of the Wild. With that being said, I'm doing my monthly Twitter scroll and I'm seeing a lot of people say that the Tears of the Kingdom is a $70 DLC. Here is an example. Monster by Day says. Answer, the original BOTW pretty well maximumed out the Switch's capabilities, so, despite some added game mechanics, they do have a similar feel. Both have the same graphics as far as I can tell. Also, both take place in Hyrule, because Zelda. I don't mind at all. But, people expecting an entirely new platform were apparently disappointed. Rigopes says. Graphics wise, it's almost the same. But damn am I having fun attaching rockets to chubby Koroks, and watching them blast off into space. Also I build hovercrafts for myself, and just fly around, like I'm the green goblin. I don't know what people were expecting. Almost all games feel similar, if you've played them all. Thala says. People didn't really want a whole new platform. They just wanted to do more stuff in the BOTW world and holy hell did Nintendo deliver. I'm crying laughing looking at stuff people have come up with in the TOTK subreddit. Nintendo is never going to be cutting edge graphics, they're always going to win on novelty. They basically looked at the crazy shit people did in BOTW and said let's let them make crazier shit. Drying washed clothes says. Answer, back when The Legend of Zelda, Skyward Sword released for Wii it released to high praise, but a pretty resounding meh from the fanbase. It was overly handhold why, easy, linear and repetitive. They devs took these criticisms to heart, and released its sequel, The Legend of Zelda, Breath of the Wild, to higher claim and pretty much revamp the whole structure, of what it means, to be a Zelda game. When Bot W released it was hailed as one of the greatest games ever made, and pretty much overnight, revolutionized the open world genre. It did everything Skyward Sword didn't, it was built on the base of giving the player as much freedom as possible, even letting people fight the end boss, as soon as they finish the tutorial, if they wanted to. And, at least in the beginning, the game was pretty difficult. Yet, it had a few shortcomings. Namely the lack of actual Zelda-like dungeons, it only had the divine beasts which were sort of dungeons, but looked very similar to each other, little enemy variety and a rather light story. Needless to say, it was still a smash hit, and has sold almost 30 million units, making it one of the most sold games on Switch and the most sold Zelda game, a fake. It got two DLCs, but the devs had a lot more plans for. r slash out of the loop. Gain OK4462 says. What's the deal with Yoso B? I was searching for new music, and came across this music video with a whopping 91 male views. The beginning is pretty catchy, but why is it so popular? It seems to be from an anon called Oshino KO, but I don't understand why this pop idol in him stands out from the rest. Can someone fill me in? Quark001 says. Answer, OC no Kao is written by the same author as another anime slash manga, a comic that an are frequently based off, called Kaguya Sam Love, is war which was incredibly popular so there was quite a bit of hype around Oshino Kao. OC no Kao is also a lot more than a regular idol show, and though I haven't watched the anime the manga is excellent, and from what I've heard the anime largely lives up to the excitement. Mrond says. Answer, Yosobi is one of the top Japanese bands at the moment, and Oshino Keo is absolutely huge, for a short, while it was ranked as the top anim of all time on my anim list after a single episode. There really isn't anything uniquely special about this situation, it's just a very popular band making a song for a very popular show. r slash out of the loop. Malediction 101 says. What's up with Janelle Moni getting her boobs out all of a sudden? I mean, I'm not complaining. 
it's just it seems a bit of a drastic turn she's taken. I'm not a fan of her music, and haven't followed her career closely, but her image was never this sexual before as far as I'm aware. More power to her, and I hope she's happy with her artistic direction, but I'm just confused. Check it out. Ad historical 8664 says. Answer, she's out and proud. Carmen de says. Answer, musical artists change, because humans change as they grow. David Bowie wasn't Ziggy Stardust forever. Moni might have started off their career with a desexualized android concept, but they are not necessarily beholden to wearing suits forever and dressing like a dandy. Many moons and tightrope was 15 years ago. Who'd want to be stuck in the same shtick forever? If her thing right now is sexuality and sex on display, it's just another part of her artistic journey. R slash out of the loop. Newt Newt 9 says. What is going on with the Turkish presidential election? Is there any chance Kilidara Glue could win with a 4% difference? I've read from multiple sources that it's almost 100% likely to go to a second vote, but who's most likely to win from this? 45% and 49% is quite a big difference. Is there any chance Kilidara Glue could win? Buzz underscore buzzing underscore buzz says. Answer, there is a chance. A runoff may get people who didn't vote the first time to show up for the second vote. The small difference could be enough to inspire those who want change and think it's achievable. Do underscore it underscore with them says. There was also a third candidate in the first election that will not be in the runoff and he has announced his support for the challenger point there. Third candidate are the remaining 5% of the votes so, if his supporters follow his lead there is a chance. Tabula Somnia says. And he has announced his support for the challenger, that is not the case at all. He has conditions to support either side, and his conditions would make it extremely difficult for the challenger to get 51%. It's a shit cake all layers all around. A just did nothing wrong says. Answer, maybe, but probably not. While the challenger may go into the election with an advantage, unless he breaks 50%, there is a high likelihood the incumbent will pull some shenanigans, thanks to him having an inordinate amount of control over the Turkish judiciary. It is difficult for anyone to interfere with the first rounds, but if nobody breaks 50%, Erdogan will have a much greater ability to influence the required runoff, or at least that is what a lot of international observers are worried about. R slash out of the loop. Kevin W says. What is going on with Polaris and Lukashenko? I saw this story today, the odd thing is, that this seems to come out of left field which makes it odd. I'm hearing a lot of theories too. Can anyone explain what is going on? Upvoter222 says. Answer, there isn't a ton of information available, so nobody really knows. Lukashenko recently attended some celebratory events in Moscow, Russia, where observers noticed that he looked tired, had a bandaged hand, and didn't give a speech. Those factors, combined with his disappearance from public events over the past few days, have led to speculation that he is sick. Russian media have confirmed that he has a non-covered illness, but have not provided additional details. Any official updates about Lukashenko would be expected to come from Belarus government controlled media sources, but they have not provided any clarity about the situation. For what it's worth, Lukashenko is an ally of Russian President Putin, and has taken Russia's side in its current invasion of Ukraine. Since that's currently the major international event involving Russia and Belarus, and the Belarusian leader is in Russia, this has fueled a lot of rumors about Russia having poisoned Lukashenko for a variety of reasons related to that war. However, there really isn't much in the way of proof to support any guess about what happened. Too long, didn't read, Lukashenko is probably sick. Details haven't been made public. R slash out of the loop. Thinibus says. What is up with Ron DeSantis? 
I feel like the moment Biden was elected, it was put out there that this governor was going to run in 24. I have no idea why this particular governor is so important or why it matters that has running for president. I don't follow politics closely and I'm just curious why I've been overhearing conversations and seeing posts about this guy for three years. Dukes Nukem says. Answer, I don't think he's so particularly important as an individual, but there's a factional dispute within the Republican Party between what you might call the base and the establishment, with Trump's victory in the 2016 primary constituting a revolt of the base. These terms are rather abstract and not very specific, but you can include many CEOs among the establishment who prefer Republicans to Democrats but found Trump despite being a CEO himself, to be too unstable, risky and polarizing, which is bad for business, but it's also benefiting Democrats, which is just as bad from their perspective. The Wall Street Journal has been a big booster of DeSantis too, and that newspaper reflects this point of view. Here's my theory about this, there has been a basic bargain between the Republican Party establishment and the base for many years. The politicians would throw some red meat to the base regarding social and cultural issues in exchange for votes for pro-business politicians. But the aftermath of the 2007-2008 financial crisis and a very strong perception among Republican voters that the establishment doesn't actually deliver on those social-slash-cultural issues created the conditions for Trump to grab the base and run away with it, and the establishment became alarmed because there are long-term negative consequences for them if this is so chaotic that Democrats get their act together, rally people, and come back and pass a bunch of laws the CEOs don't like. DeSantis is trying to win the base back, so he has picked a fight with Disney over cultural issues among some other things, while the establishment types want him to be president instead of Trump, so he'll cut their taxes without being so provocative that he stirs up his supporters into breaking into the capital, or antagonizes everyone else so much that riots break out. He's like Diet Trump and many of Trump's supporters see him that way, which is a problem for DeSantis. Trump is like crystal meth by comparison, it's more powerful stuff. That's all for this video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe.